and I'm really excited to watch this again. You know, Hurricane and Mr. Crimson, I mean, two just amazing players. Hurricane's been killing it with Cammy, and then Mr. Crimson, you know, I was going to sit here and talk all about his amazing dulcim play, but uh, it seems to me that Mr. Crimson has uh, maybe moved on to uh, Nah, Luke he's been here. having a lot of fun with Luke. He, he thinks Luke is the best character in the game. This is his secondary at the moment. He's been having tons of fun. I've been losing to his Luke personally, but he's been putting in that work well, and making sure his main and his secondary stay on fine form and you can see that there, James, that he's already dominating against Hurricane's carry. Oh, man, I mean, you said you were losing to uh, his Luke. Well, Hurricane looking like uh, <laughs> falling victim to the Luke as well so far. But let's see if Hurricane... Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. TP all ready to go. And wow, I think he thought he was going to land on the other side. I think both of them thought it was going to be a cross-up. And then he just landed in the front. And do not forget, man, like, even at this year's EVO, you're probably going to see a ton of Luke's going to be prepared yeah. and ready, depending <laughs> what's going to happen with this character. Well, oh, oh, no! Another. Hurricane dropping a combo right there, but doesn't matter. Still manages to get uh, Mr. Crimson to the corner, but the V-Trigger activation going to get him right out of there. Ooh, Mr. Crimson. Right, and another throw. That was a good choice from him. <gasps> what? Where's yeah. the... Where's the juggle? Where's the EXDP juggle right there? Because right now, uh, Hurricane's in danger of getting chipped. I think that's what that shoulder rush from Crimson was going to be. He was just trying to do shoulder rush right into Super for the chip. It missed, but <laughs> fortunately for Crimson, it worked out anyway. Yeah, it was um, it was interesting because Mr. Crimson went for two grabs after that activation because if Hurricane decided to challenge or get baited, he was going to lose to a combo into the CA. So that's why he took those grabs. And then obviously, as you identified, James, he went for the Avenger tackle to try and chip him, but Hurricane was one step ahead, but still close, but no cigar. Let's see if he can get back on the board here, James. All right, gets the dive kick. Oh, no. Hurricane definitely dropping a lot of combos. Yeah, this is uncharacteristic of him. He's not normally this uh, shaky and this frightened about doing certain things. He's usually consistent with this stuff. And you can't be dropping combos against Luke. Not with a character as low vitality as Cammy. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to bait out a DP. He's suspecting Mr. Crimson after the dash and to try to bust out with a DP. Instead, Mr. Crimson went with the throw. Okay, here we go. Nice using the throw off of the EX Hooligan to stay close, but then puts himself back in the corner. Oh no, and he's gonna hit him with the destructive CA and end it there. That's gonna be putting Mr. Crimson at potential match point here, James. I don't think Hurricane's got around on the board yet. Yeah, and Mr. Crimson again, I mean, this past year, uh, 2021, I should say, was really, I feel like, the year of Mr. Crimson. He really sure. got to show off his strength and become one of the elite players. Ooh, nice use of the V-Skill, too, from Cammy. All right, gets the whiff punish on the stand fist there, but Mr. Crimson going to be fine from the corner. He's comfortable doing that with both his characters, but Hurricane needs to get around on the board and mistimes his throw there, James. Yeah, just a wake up throw. Might have even been a tech attempt. Oh, okay, here we go. He's got the meter. Yes, for the critical art. Hurricane is on the board. Let's go. There you go. Slowly but surely. It takes a while to kind of find your rhythm again and pick up the paces. But again, I think a character that's going to surprise you or galvanize you into getting back to your fine form, it is going to be Luke. Charges up that B skill one. Gets punished. Yeah, too high for that dive kick, but, you know, Hurricane also, a lot of success playing uh, on a lot of the online events for the past couple of years. Mm, same with Mr. Crimson. These two go back and forth in their, you know, online records in the past year and a half, James. This has been pretty wild, and they both use Luke, too, so I'm surprised we didn't see a Luke mirror from these guys. <laughs> Hurricane wants to do it with his original main, and here we go, nice dive kick. Not gonna juggle with any EX. Uppercut's gonna stay close in here. And look at this, Hurricane now so close to tying this up one to one. He's got that right. critical Next art on deck. One good confirmed just like that. <laughs> there you go. See, and that's what's crazy about these characters, James. It's how threatening 
and how devastating their crouching medium kicks are. The mileage they get from them with resources or without resources, it's still pretty deadly. And this is what you need to be doing at the highest level, getting those crouching medium kick hit combos with Kamis, with Lukes, with your Karens as well. But again, great to see that Hurricane's back in form. He's fully focused. It's one apiece right now, but who's going to take this next game, James? So it's again, this is two out of three. So whoever wins this one takes it. We're at a best of one now. And you know, you're talking about these crouching medium kick converbs. There was one right there. And see, Hurricane dropped his right there. And it's so crazy how much the single hit confirm has become such a staple of Street Fighter V gameplay. Oh, caught him with the crush. Okay. Oh, he could do it for the star. And he missed it. And uh, Mr. Crimson wanted to do so. I'm not sure Mr. Crimson input there. It might have been Luke's V reversal because it was with a kick. Yeah. He didn't get the stun. <laughs> Reactions. That was cold. Reactions. Got the DP. Stop the dive kick. He had it all ready to go. So now Mr. Crimson match point. And there was that single hit confirm again. There it is. Oh, oh good no, space man. dive kick. He got Mr. Crimson to have an execution error there. But again, Hurricane hasn't been able to take advantage of that. And he's had another execution error or probably mistimed uh, input there for the hit confirmed, James. Okay, but again, that was punishable once again. Hurricane gets that uh, combo. Gonna save the rest of the V trigger. But here we go into the critical art. No, he's not gonna. He, I guess he didn't think it was gonna kill yet. No. Oh, oh it's hit by the dive kick. Shit. Not quite! No. He missed it! No! Oh, he missed oh. it! Gar right here, knowing that they were gonna go, you know, it's fine. We knew that, right? But Gobu, sticking with the Zato pick, we saw during Rebel Kumite, he finished the job against Diaphone with that Gold Lewis, and he said, I'm going back to basics. He's going back to basics, he's going for it. I mean, that Gold Lewis was convincing. I don't think anybody has ever mm -hmm. convinced more of anything than their whole life. You could tell me I'm a dog and I wouldn't believe it as much. But with this match, right, he is sticking with it. So I really, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't either, you know, it, you're right with convincing because that character actually, I feel like jumped up on the tier list. Bazado's still strong with it. Gobu versus Doru, let's get it. Versus Tula seems gonna take it. Already a strong round start right here from Gobu, putting him in the corner. Yeah, and this is huge, right? Both these characters massively momentum-based. Not a lot of great defensive options on either side. So a lot of this is really gonna go boil down to who gets the best Oki first. Not bad right there with the throw. Gets him locked in the corner. That was coast to coast to make it deal with the ghost. And the air throw puts it down to the ground. The air throw out of the dive kick. I have not seen that ever in my whole life, actually. Sending in the piercer. Goes immediately into the frog to clip out of the air. Great reaction from Gobu. About to finish it, only needs one touch to tap to do it like that. And another throw to seal it! Gobu caught that stroke! Everyone on the internet vindicated who says just throw an easy clap. I mean, there it is. That's all mm -hmm. you gotta do. Easy clap like that right here. Gobu, we talked about defensive wow. option. He has that good innate defensive option to get the throw, but here we go. How's your defense when you caught up in the corner against Eno? Forward dash going right under the HCL. Now stuck in the sandwich pressure. What a scoop! By P, reversal. We still got reversal. The super, the air to air right there. The challenge. Knock him down to the ground. A Leap little bit of a drop, Rooney. That BRC could have converted into probably the end of the round, honestly, if he had his stuff together. But now still stuck in the corner. Which is mm. horrible for Daru. One more touch to do it. Midi. And the last hit once again. You see him catch the distance. No back, though. No, no problem, though. Man. No Gobu. problem. I, I can't believe how violent that was and i mean we're seeing it the, the, the gold lewis never heard of him i didn't even what do you mean Ooh. uh you know <laughs> where he's sticking with the zato you, they also have the bike and i was like dog i was hoping for some biking when i heard about this match he said no 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 back to basics we talk about defense being a problem point for zato he's got that preventative health an apple a day keeps the eno away and he'll go for these defensive throws to switch up momentum and put it back in his favor and right now the favor of the rounds going down is for him as Gobu is on game point. Remember, first of two situation. It's a first of two situation, which is scary. Anything could happen. I, I have no idea, but I mean, mm -hmm. I I'm not gonna lie. As soon as he scooped that dive kick, I was like, oh dang, he knows the matchup. Oh no, <laughs> this is bad news bears for Daru. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in the lab. The fighting game player that's been in the lab is a dangerous dude right there. You know, not that many people uh, do that. You know, but that's a tip y'all can take to the bank. Other ones gonna have to charge for. I just realized that HCL, I, it did, it went over 
Eddie and actually hit Zato <laughs> in the face and immediately knock him out of it. That's a really important math knowledge. That might be something you can look out for right here if you are playing, you know, Ultra Tree, so call for the corner. 6H, Chemical Love, the Toxicity. Toxicity in our cities immediately gets the 2K. Are you blocking that? Are you blocking the Tri Dash? Well, no, you're not. It's a perfect. Mm -mm. Man's pushing peas out here with that perfect KO. There you go. Don't who answer it back like that, but the back throw, defensive style, now on offense. FD ain't gonna save you. These air throws are crazy. I mean, that's kind of what this game is known for, but Goku is really redefining the term. The double overhead immediately takes the first. That was a great opportunity to first there. A post. Try to get the 2D, didn't get it, but still getting in for that pressure situation. Nice, neutral chop on the punish, red RC. This might be the victory if we can get that wall split, I think. Not like that. No, that, no wall splats here. The BRC, that's Omega Plus, actually combos the Pierce because of the slowdown. Those are combo first, but this is a spooky situation for both of them, honestly. Mm-hmm, trying to lay the Beethoven on him. And the Tuki, again, the toxicity for that win. So I'm gonna get in. That's crazy. I can't believe that Drunker Shade didn't do nothing. What was he doing? Man's t t two drinks in and he's already not holding down the anti-airs? Come on, Eddie. Uh, I thought he was going to stay sober with it, but the bartender right here, the mix coming through is Daru, though. And again, that's how you got to get your win. And you pointed this out. And you pointed this out very correctly. Whoever gets the mix gets the win. Whoever has the spice stays nice. And we are game to game right here. Thank you, Lord, that we didn't get a blow up because I ain't trying to announce Evo Guilt the Gear out here with just like a, a first or two when they just get washed. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Go play Guilty Gear Strive. This is the best player in the world. Oh, he just got quadruple <laughs> uh, perfect in. Okay, everybody yeah, go on home. Yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> no, but I said. Oh, uh, man, that would be awful. These are such momentum based characters. So, I mean, I don't know. The ideal situation here is that what. Oh, again! That is three of the craziest air throws I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Can we get a counter on how many times Manson went for the air throw? Chat, let me know what it'd be like that. Yo, base the first, I got that burst thirst, and this is the worst it caught up in the corner. Take him to a different yeah, island with, with the island boys. <laughs> hit him with the good old Zato day one, the meaty uh, mm -hmm. 5D behind the thing, the frog. That was so fast. Immediately a perfect timing, perfect for the bed. We pushing peas out here. Positivity, perfect. And this is looking real bad for Daru. Can he get to get that win? The 2D knocked out again. Meaty fireball. The mix goes on once again. Situation. And this time the oh double down with the with the dash in. I, I regret to inform you, Cole, that Midnight Carnival is playing. This is Eno's boss team from Accent Core. I don't know if Goku's got a chance. This is now scary, but we're going down to the last round. The back to back, perfect. Final game, final round. Back to back peas. All I see is somebody's victory because this is the it. This is it right here. Trying to get that six feet actually gets the counter hit and again the mix on them. The dust base out the burst once again. The thirst quench it. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's the issue with trying to burst against the Eno. He has auto burst bait built in whenever she strokes. Hits the low. Is that enough? Gonna Doru. be our speed. This it. Doru taking it with another perfect KO. You could All not ask. I'm telling round. you right now. Let's see what. We're going to be surprised. Oh my gosh, I did not expect this, Anakin. <laughs> well, we got Nii on this, you know, legendary, famous character that he's been known for, but really hasn't played in tournaments uh, at all over like the last several years. He's been bouncing around, trying to counterpick players, trying to counterpick characters. So, uh, you know, we see these Brian picks in exhibition matches and stuff. So that's what I'm really uh, happy to see. And JDCR, I feel like he's lately been in a character crisis situation. Can't really decide who he wants to take to these tournaments. But um, in an exhibition set, Fakum Rama is never a bad choice never a bad choice you know he's been using a lot of armor king particularly when these guys would meet up meet up in like in tournament play uh me would always kind of shift towards kind of geese and steve as well so it's interesting to see this matchup maybe a matchup we're not used to seeing at least here and now so right now yeah. me looking to really open up jdcr and he's doing such a great job of it and it's all about timing those hatchet kicks they they add up I yeah mean, he doesn't have any low options it came early, you know, a lot of players they do a lot of mids, they play it safe, they don't want to take those risks, and they wait until later is to start opening up those lows. And he's the type of player where you really do think that he is that way, he doesn't like taking risks at the beginning, so that's really what caught JDCR off guard there, and it's been known that JDCR is not, you know, I wouldn't say bad at low blocking, but if you're ever going to break his defense, that's where you're going to do it, because he's so good at dodging everything else, right? Yeah, I think he's right talked now, he's about his technology a lot, he's like, he doesn't want to risk kind of ducking and getting launched, right? Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. What a duck there from me, able to get the full count down 4-2-1. Looking to end it here, and the taunt will do it. 
that is what he's known for, really revolutionizing the use of Bryant throughout the many years and really adding that to his arsenal. You got to remember, yeah. Knee is the one that really popularized the use of the taunt, and he was able to utilize it in such a way that it becomes a threat. You have to be careful on how you get up. Wow, the full combo. He used everything Ooh. perfectly this time. It still gets it to the wall. I've never seen that before. And JDCR keeps tech rolling, and this is what you get against a player as good as Knee. You keep testing him, you know. Uh, he's going to definitely answer those those test questions perfectly. So right there, taunt being used. I saw, I saw like three different occasions perfectly. Twice to end the round. Once right there with that sick wall combo that I've never even seen before to just carry with the 1-4 from that position to the wall. Uh, that's that that was, right a, there, so. that was a brilliant <laughs> display of Brian play from Nii. And, you know, again, we don't really get to see it that often, especially when it comes to competition, mm -hmm. especially against a player like JDCR. So that was quite a treat. That's going to kind of put JDCR back to the, the drawing board there. I mean, um, is he going to switch to another character? What's he going to do? Because right now, Nii is up 1-0, and he looked comfortable. That was three straight rounds, pure domination. Anytime JDCR tried to come in, he got hit with a counter hit. Uh, four, he got hit with the magic four. He got hit with jabs. And he really just controlled it, especially on the Oki side. He landed like a couple lows there. That's the only thing that I even recall JDCR being successful at. But that was a total beatdown, three straight rounds, and the type of match where you don't really get to learn much about your opponent. You don't really even have a plan of attack. But he's gonna switch with Falcon Round there. I guess the way he sees it is that that went so bad, it can't be any, it can't get any worse. This game cannot yeah. be any worse, right? And I think that is true. That was just. <laughs> Everything he did wrong there. Tech rolling on the wall, um, you know, just guessing wrong in the mix-ups. And, yeah, uh, if anything he does differently here, we'll probably uh, give him a chance to learn a little bit more, survive a little bit longer. Um, me is looking really strong right now with Brian. I wonder why he doesn't pick that character more in tournaments. I don't know. It's a thing. Like, I feel like he pulls him out every now and then, right? And when he does, it's always a surprise and a treat for the fans. But again, whenever he does pick him, he always makes sure that he's using them mm. to an effective way. Oh my gosh, nice punish. You know, JDCR is really known for his movement, his evasion. So far, he's sidestepped a couple moves, but I saw an like, uh, opportunity to get more damage. He's settling right now. But this is a nice juicy combo into the round finisher. Nicely done. Definitely going to gain some confidence there uh, for JDCR, getting his first round of this set. He's using that down 4-1 poke string. A lot of options from there already. Knees back to the wall. Oh my god, he was ready. <laughs> he was ready. Mm, he was ready for that too. Perfect punish, but the oh. combo came too soon and he dropped it. But big lead right now for Knee. One more launch and I think that's going to be, could be death. Yeah, and you know Knee, of course, not a stranger to this character. Of course, using Bakumram as well. Uh, one of those uh, rare players that has really every single character in his roster is Tekken God Omega. Oh. Yeah, like, he did that a while ago, uh, doing doing that achievement. I don't think anybody's done that in the world, get Tekken God Omega with every single character. It's so hard to just get even Tekken God Prime, man. Everybody, anybody who plays rank knows, so that's really impressive for him. And he's just, oh, yeah. you know, hungry for more right now. Here we go. The patience right now. They're switching it up. Knee. Feels a little bit pressured right now. He's throwing a lot more keep out moves. Does not want JDCR to get close. And that's the thing. It's all about timing. And I feel like JDCR in that opening round, he had a good read on the timing. But then, again, Nii kind of just changing things up here. You know, he was going in on him in that very first match. He was going for the hatchet kicks. He was going for the pressure tools with the back one, with the down two. But let's see what he does now. How is he going to open him up? There is a life lead round. on JDCR. No big moments have happened so far. So waiting for that first big launch, that first big counter hit. There it is. It's not going to be death for JDCR yet, but is he going to tech roll? Is he going to challenge Knee again? And he's staying down, rightfully so. Respects the skills. Pretty oh, solid. Magic 4. Yeah. A couple times now that that string has uh, gotten JDCR out of trouble. And uh, I think that once, you know, Knee is a player that likes, has been trying to get close with Brian so he can land these counter hits or these lows. And so right there, he sensed that Knee was trying to make that comeback and he didn't want to let that happen so shut down with the right kick left kick. pretty simple okay oh here we go everything He's going to open well. him up again mm -hmm. but a nice likely here yeah. of course when you're throwing out a lot of pokes like that though up close it only just takes one magic four and right as i said that it's actually knee who gets it and it could be death right here Oof. the big yeah, character gotta remember combo. <laughs> Bakumram is a big character. He's unable to escape that extra damage at the wall. And Nii, one of those guys, he has that knowledge. He's mm. going to know exactly what to do in any given situation. JDCR being stubborn right now with the down back four low kick. 
uh, Brian gets big damage and a knockdown uh, when he blocks that. So a lot more times than not, it's been blocked. And Nii right now with a slight advantage. His back's to the wall, though. And you see him. He's trying to step to his right, slowly get away, and, and pressure the other way. And now JDCR with his back to the wall. You see it. Once somebody's back to the wall, they try to throw out those attacks to try to get off. Whatever it is, it's better than being back fully up against the wall. Against either Falcon Rum or Brian, it's pretty much like you're dead at that point. So they're trying everything oh, yeah. they can to get off that that corner. And that's the thing. Some of these things that are crucial because, you know, they're both so good in terms of movement. So they them pulling out the homing moves, like, for example, JDCR going for that down back four. He has to be Ooh. careful, especially with his back to the wall. Man, look at that knee closing it out. And that is going to be it. Knee Oh, so yeah, it looks like we're going to have uh, Reynold on the left, on the one player side, and El Rosa on the right. El Rosa running Kukri, Dinosaur, and Ralph. And Reynold running, I almost missed it, but he definitely had a Ralph in there. Elizabeth and Vanessa. He's been singing high praises of Vanessa pretty much since the game came out. I'm interested yeah. to see how he can make this character work. I think uh, so. I've I've seen some of his matches, and he's he's definitely seems like he's putting in a lot of time in Vanessa. He seems like a really big believer. And honestly, I I'm with him because the I'm character there seems too, like yeah, because yeah, because she's got a lot I, of different like, ways to open you up and stuff and mix you up. So it's not just that too, but like you remember how she was in 14, where she was just like this combo beast, but it was like very tied to her meter and how much she had. Now it's a little more opened up because of how the system works in 15. And she's a little bit faster. She's just more versatile that way and can put a ton of damage on you quickly. Absolutely. But right now it looks like uh, they're both kind of feeling each other out. Not too many major hits have uh, really come through yet. Oh yeah, I bet you there's going to be like a lot of disrespect once they get comfortable. Absolutely. On Both these guys. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, Reynold. But El Rosa can get a little cheeky too, you know? Oh, for sure, man. These are actually two great competitors to showcase right now. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. And I think that might be it for Kukri. Yes, sir! Yeah, good clean hit for Reynold. Opens it all up. Uh, man, Vanessa, she she very efficiently turns bar into damage, man. Yeah. <laughs> But yo, this Not is this hard, is uh, El Rosa's character though, Dinosaur. The quintessential dinosaur player, yeah, I've been playing him since 14. Uh, been doing just magical stuff since 15 came out with this character, kind of making dinosaur players out of a lot of the new KOF players. Absolutely, yeah. I, I saw a lot of people uh, really interested in the character after the Team Spooky exhibitions that mm -hmm. uh, you know he was playing in. Ooh. Nice. And that's exactly why. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh he went for another one, but yeah, big disrespect out of Reynold. Good stuff. That might have been, I think that was EX too, and Reynold just stuffed it with the close C. Yep. Oh, oh no! The overhead, no. Not you know what? That's position. okay. That's that's secondary character almost dead. Vanessa did her job. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth is coming in with two and almost two and a half bars against a dinosaur that is bleeding. Yeah. Now this is another really strong character in my opinion, uh, Elizabeth. Oh, uh, she's got, yeah, she's got a lot of really straightforward but very effective uh, options, um, and she's got one of the best anti airs in the game in her reflect. Yeah, it's very uh, aggravating to deal with, especially when you play a team full of like projectile users that just want to get that space opened up. And right now, that doesn't seem to be a problem for El Rosa. Yikes! That was such a crazy. I don't know if that even crossed up or not, but that clearly ran the game. Yeah. <laughs> But wow, that was a really good presence of mind from El Rosa to be able to convert that into a kill combo. Yeah, and that was a quick match too, so D Dinosaur got a lot of that life back looking like he's a contender in the f the third round here. That's true, but this is that character, right? This is that character, guys. Like, this man changes momentum so quickly. El Rosa's got one more touch left to his name. Cannot get poked. Ooh. Yeah, big now trade in down. Reynolds' favor there. I think Rolf, down to an uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny that both characters or both players are opting to choose Ralph as anchor. I mean, there's a reason for that guy. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, Stan D kind of makes a big argument for that case. And there we see it. This is gonna be a lot of damage. He still has two bars left over. That's right. Delay it, catch him. Ooh, this is gonna hurt. Absolutely. My goodness, this is one touch territory now for uh, yeah. Alarosa. What the heck? What was he looking oh, for? No. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow, I, I, okay, he opts to save the meter. Yeah. I thought he wanted, I I would have, I could have sworn that he was going to go for a climax there, you know? I, I think there was really 
very few arguments against it unless he's that confident in his offense that, hey, he left me alive. I'm going to get another chance to touch him again. So let's actually kill him the second time. But as you see right yeah. there, he ended up spending that meter on a bad quick max. Ooh. Now this is actually one touch territory. Yes, but really, I mean, if, if El Rosa gets now one more clean hit, this is anyone's game. Oh! But it's back, baby. So with that said, let's get into the match. All right, so I did know, so Scrot was notably a Hisui player, but has been playing around a lot with Shiki and Misoma sticking with Vlav, the, you know, the Did character that they've been playing for a really, really long time. So I'm excited to see what Scrot brings forth with this Shiki pick, because I know he's been playing with a lot post Frosty. So let's see what he's got. Yeah, like you mentioned, right? We don't, we most often associate him with Hisui play, but this Tono character in this game is so balanced, so strong. Like, it feels like he's a constant threat, close range, mid range. Masoma's Vlog character, of course, very excellent at zoning, long range, but also a big threat in mid range too because of the threat of overheads and his low wreckers and things like that. He's able to mix you up pretty, pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty hard, I think, to get a, get a handle on how to approach this character in certain ranges. Right, exactly. And as we saw in that previous match, Masoma just dominated. Like, I like the idea of what Scrot is going for. Finally gets a good hit here, but Masoma was really dominant in that first game, especially with all that ground mix-up game that Vlav has. But here is the power of Shiki mixing up in the corner. Big combo, taking Vlav down to half health and forces out a heat. Yeah, this character's conversion power just, uh, from mid-range touches especially, especially with meter to back him up. He's so dangerous. Then you see him showing off that one-hit record, that thing is like a vacuum. You can hit on the ground, multi-purpose special. Anti-air on the ground. Nice air-to-air -air jump B here. Masoma gonna be able to make a good conversion. Hit the drop. You see, most of Vlog's combos like that off of some of those touches is going to put him at a range where he can get back to zoning or swinging that machete from mid-range. Yeah, the thing with Vlog is that even if he's not using his fireball game, his normals are huge and take up so much of the screen. Really yeah. nice blocking and spacing there from the Soma. They're very obnoxious. Very obnoxious. They hit, they hit like very disjointed too. Yeah, and unfortunately there at the end of that one, Scrot was stuck in the shield animation and got hit with the ground fire coming back. And so Masoma takes that first one. Yeah, and I think with these two when they play too, I think that's a that's a big factor in how the set can go is Masoma's mental fortitude and how long he can be confident in his ability to control Scrot's movement in particular. You notice when he gets full screen, it's about trying to read Scrot's approaches and be able to mix up his fireball patterns from there. If Scrot can get in and run his offense like this, mm -hmm. that's where he can really put Masoma on his back and make him have to make some bad guesses defensively. Right now, Masoma in control though, takes the corner away from him. Yeah, all right, and a nice shield counter. Oh, BC shield counter, and this is exactly what you were highlighting. Gets into that fireball range, mixes up with the ground game. Look at that. He's trying to catch with the jump, but it's not working, unfortunately. And now Scrot forced to block. Does have three bars of magic circuit, though, so could turn this around pretty quickly. But doesn't he get caught? And Masoma doing a really, really good job of intercepting Scrot's movement, like, you, like, like we were saying, right? Note the jump Bs, note the just the ground anti-air swings. Scrot having a really tough time getting in. Awesome backdash and punish on the throw attempt. He's gonna eat yeah, what? That backdash yeah, into the wreck up, perfect. Oh, and he even does a little bit of charge for the moon gauge too. That's just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, that's an option Masoma goes to pretty often. Just in the meantime, when characters when players like to sit and try to block or be patient, he's willing to take that gauge build. Charging like that builds meters. It's going to give him more damage potential. Well, Vlog works so well with uh, Moon Drive, too, so it's really essential for him to have nice blocking just to stare off. Scrot Vermillion regaining so much of that recoverable health and a good throw to try and set up back in the neutral. We do it again. Wow. He got excellent return out of that heat activation. Got all the health back, got confidence back, and then was able to just use throws in, on his offense to really throw some off beat. This is a strong opening from Scrot. Probably one of the strongest that we've seen thus far in the set, too. He's putting Masoma in the corner. Another throw. That's three in a row that haven't been challenged. But Vlov does Vlov things with huge buttons. And now that he's in ice mode, he's got a different move set, and his projectiles are larger as well. Yeah, here we go, Masoma. 
Stomp, stomp. Shield on the big swing there. Using ice projectiles to try to get lock squat down. Just do some chip damage. Take the opportunity to charge as well. Staircase down. Squat in good position here. It has three bars built. I like the idea of going ahead and choose one. Oh, and another reactive heat to try and just change the tides here. That's actually, that's putting Masoma at a good health gauge, and it wasted all of the heat activation from Scrot as well, but Scrot coming back with moon activation. Yeah, that defensive moon drive activation to be able to see what's happening in the string in real time like that. Be able to create an opening for Scrot here. Nice jump shield on the moon skill there. Be able to get a guaranteed punish there. Very, very smart play. I like the adjustments that we're seeing from Scrot to be able to... You know, he noticed that at full screen, of course, at full screen against Flav, you're not going to be able to do as much as what you want to. But that was giving Misoma all of the advantages, Shiki being at full screen and Scrot by using a different combination of shield and moon drive and just honestly run ups and grabs was able to totally change the tide of that. Yeah, and it's about being a little bit patient or a little bit deceptive in how he on how he moves with Scrot, right? You can't just really just jump in every the same way every time, or that's going to be easy for Masoma to read and intercept, as you saw in game one, right? But then now he's mixing up that air movement along the ground, putting in a lot more dash, and then breaking, mixing up just run and attack with run up throw. Yeah, this is, even though it seems much more back and forth, Scrod is definitely hurting for health, but he's is almost done with his moon drive activation and has full magic circuit, but now Masoma gaining back so much of that health after the heat activation. But Scrot being very careful around this fireball game and just it manages to get right in between them and carry him all the way to the corner. This could be huge with the amount of meter that he's yeah, got. That's the, thing. that's the thing, Jalen. Total with three bars and he has corner control. Counter Moon Drive gets the throw. <gasps> that's oh, a huge nice. gummy point and the, man, he just trucks straight through Masoma's match. Charge C just doing work right here. It's Scrot on set point. Jeez. I mean, this is again a very strong start from the Soma getting trying to get back as much of that moon meter as he can because it's so great for Vlav, like we said before. The jump C combo goes all the way through. Big damage, just trying to get the floor ice. And again, Scrot with these shield challenges coming in clutch. And the Soma's defense so activated right now. Gets the big touch here, and that's going to do it. We're going to a final round. Oh, this is so great. What do you? What else do you want to see for a reveal? We want to see it final game, final round. <laughs> <laughs> jump C trucking through the jumpy air-to-air -air attempt from Misoma. Squaw gets the corner. This is the advantageous position that he's been able to get so much return out of. Big call out on the wake-up heat activation. Four bars built. This is going to be big damage potential here. Yeah. Barring any drops. Yeah, does he decide to go for anything super crazy? No, just uses what he knows. Good combos. Moon drive for moon drive activation and the challenge and full super Scrot Vermillion is gonna take it with a beautiful arc drive finish. I mean, what else do you want? But Yasha has been rotating characters a lot, right? Yeah, he has. Yasha, of course, like you said a second ago, man, regarded by many as the best out there right now. You know, this guy has, uh, you know, sing single-handedly changed the meta almost. You know, him along with some of the French players, Wawa, uh, you know, these other guys just pushing the limits of what this game has. But he's going up against Gropis, who, you know, we just spoke about Shanks being one of Spain's finest players. But don't forget about Gropis, man. This guy is a beast in his own right. Evo online yeah. champion as well for, for this game. Really, really yep. strong player. He was the, uh, the EVO champ actually for last year, the, the online EVO. Uh, he also does really well in Spain on the round, beat Shanks a lot of times and always does well. But the first opening goes to Yasha. Yasha who opted for the Super Broly team. He's been having fun with that character lately. Oh man, for sure. He's a... He, you know, we saw some of that um, at the Battle Hour exhibition. You know, we did get to see some of uh, Yasha's Super Broly. This is a character that he really enjoys. Maybe a bit more known for, for these other two characters though, the Gogeta Blue and the Android 17. But man, that Super Broly, when he gets cooking, it's no joke, man. Yeah, of course. As usually we would see Vegito in that spot, but Yasha has been known to go around and around. And to be honest, knowing Yasha's gameplay, as long as this happens, as long as his team can two touch you from any moment, that's all he needs. Super Broly in. <laughs> Exactly, and the big threat, the big talking point of the game right now, Android 21 Labco is out of the picture, guys. There will be no 
damage nerfs on this play this game. Yeah, that was efficient for Biasha. Oh, the jump away from the Dragon Rush. Tries to go for a float. 6M is gonna be blocked. Great defense. Oh. But you can't block that. Get snatched, man. Nah, man. Here we go. Super Broly. And I love this character. Okay. Of course, it's gonna be Yasha, so it's gonna be optimization station all day. There we go. Throws down the ball. Level one. Level four, three, Get nope. the knockdown. Okay. Yeah, it's just still had the barrier to cover that as well. But the Spark to save Zamasu, he's still gonna get opened up. Spark is probably gonna allow that Zamasu to stay alive. But look at this, man. Yasha is always ready. Uh, a bit too far away, though, for that S. Usually that does reach from, like, pretty close uh, to, to, to half screen. But um, that one missed, unfortunately, for Yasha. Oh, man. Yeah, opening regardless, and oh. he manages to snipe the Votag that 21 is being caught. That Super Broly is hitting like a tank right now. Any super burly hit. Oh, there we go. Rejump time. Oh no, Grobus didn't tech. That's unfortunate. Okay, just gonna go. Uh, you know, they they say it is fame, man. Blue combos do the same damage. <laughs> Bro, if you didn't tech, that's more damage. Exactly. It's okay, psychological go. damage is along with character damage. Oh yeah. That should be a dead uh, Android 21 actually. Provided to finish the combo, that should be good. Get the dragon rush. What the I mean that was not even <laughs> Bro, yes, the Dragon Rush is right, but not the way he wanted it to. That was a drop opportunity, drop shin select, whatever you want to call it. It worked out for Yasha, man. <laughs> that was mixed. I personally got hit. <laughs> that was mixed for me. <laughs> oh, wow. Straight into to level three. Get to get the shirt off. Yeah, so out. That's that going to kill, right? Enough. Yeah, that is. What a quick 1-0 for Yasha, just asserting dominance. We know obviously that uh, Yasha has been, uh, he beat Gropis in quite a few tournaments. Uh, Gropis may be suffering from the fact that, you know, Andrew Tonoab Gropis is pretty new, maybe not used to her enough to uh, play against someone like Yasha. That's true. Uh, you also, you've also got to think about it like this, right? Picking Labcoat 21 against uh, a guy like Yasha that is renowned for his optimization his max damage situations it's a really good call actually because you know yeah. getting that debuff on any one of these three characters is a big win for gropus yeah okay, it pretty much eliminates the, the two touch condition and there we go you get the overhead for an opening send down and you can probably go for the debuff there and and right now gogeta blue does not have access to the two touches anymore he needs to three touch yasha has a normal team now Yes, that's very important. Oh, there we go. Very nice. It's another hit as well. And now, this is a massive win for Gropus, because not only did he get that debuff on Gogeta Blue, the spark is now wasted on Yasha's side. Yep, nice. Look at that, man. The options that this character has, very, very, very threatening character. Scary. Dead. Yeah, that's what he wants to stop. That's dead, right? One and one. I was about yeah. to say, like, can he build enough to kill? And he actually did. That man is optimal as hell. That debuff was not even relevant for Gogeta in the end, because he disappeared before even <laughs> landing the hit. That's so true. But now look at this, this comeback that Yasha has to make. That's a full life team on Gropus' side, maybe not anymore, but still, three characters to two, no spark on Yasha's side. Oh, yeah. I love that 6H. Ah, the re-jump is dropped through. And good movement by Gropis there. Just catches Yasha slipping. Gonna go for an extension with Zamasu. Don't have enough power to go for level 3, but potentially the blade of judgment at the end of this for the mix. Just extending, finishing that combo, and there we go. Bro, this is a Zamasu master out here. You know, I love to see this character go to work. You know, we've been seeing a lot more of him lately. Gropis, not only Gropis, uh, Zane from the US as well has been putting on a, on a great performance of this character as of late. Hope to see him at EVO. Absolutely. Definitely one of the players that a lot of us didn't know before and uh, got to discover him through the uh, US finals at the moment. Yasha putting in work on that Zamasu. Probably gonna tag that 17 in. And he does. Probably a chance to go for level 3 and guarantee the mix. Yes, he does. And it's a one touch on Zamasu. Oh, this is massive. Will grow his spark though. Oh, he went for the stop sign, but Yasha baits it out. And man, he needs, he needs to make a two character comeback right now. It's 2v2. But Yasha is just so good. His reads, his moves, he's the complete package as a player, man. He's got everything you need to be world class in Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah, he's been working really well right now. Send her all the way down and just potentially go for a staircase to lock that Android 21 down. Group piece, forcing the corner with movement and just going for the key blast wall. Just managed to get through, blocks the slide, some recas to block, decides to spark. We don't block here, we just get out of jail. Can he get the opening now? Oh, he did it. That was invincible. Level one gets out the corner. And man, I feel like Andrew 21 Labcoat might have a good matchup against... Oh, never mind. The movement from Yasha just opening up Gropus there. Gets the hit. Yeah, that Spark is definitely massive. going to uh, save her there. We see Yasha apply playing... Oh my god, you cannot chase that what ever. The Look damage. at the damage. Tyrant, she's going to be in that second bar. Not going to be enough to kill, I believe. Wait, the assist is back. Gets the Wait, Dragon Rush, not the third bar. Wait, oh. 
I, I respect that. Get that debuff super on Andrew 17. And look at the damage. Yo, that is the 21% special buff she gets on that level 1 command grab as well, man. So scary to think about. That is the one. We talk a lot about that super being a debuff, but it's also a buff for her, right? Her special get that plus 21%. Yeah. So it's a, it's a win-win for her. Gets to level 3. Yasha sends out, guns out. Gonna try to go for the storms. Rope is blocking in the corner, trying to challenge. The super dash is gonna be blocked. Yasha still with the challenge and gets away this time. No command grab, but no punish from Rope. Man, poor Super Broly. She only needs to spend one bar for a 21% damage special buff. And poor S Broly needs to spend three to take the shirt off and only get 5%. Man, it's kind of, it kind of sucks to be S Broly out here. <laughs> it's like, just get better. Go, go more to go to the gym, man. Go back, <laughs> come back more buff than this right now. Yasha struggling. That 17 is down bad. One hit and what a conversion. He immediately buffered that Z change there to kill Android Bro. 17. And even this one up is going to be 1 1. That was sick from Gropis. Man, and tell you what, that, that beam, it might be the best beam in the game. It's so fast. Yeah. Um, it gives that little explosion effect at the end. So you can, man, that was a great raw tag. Uh, sorry, that was a great uh, uh, Z change from the from the, from the the beam. Good option from Gropis. And we're going 1-1 one, one here in this EVO 2022 exhibition set. All right, one start barrier, the T-Post to assert dominance, but Yasha is not going to get caught just yet. And watch out, that's going to be tech. Great defense by Yasha. Going to wait, and we are going to get again a ton of damage. What is scaling, Tarant? We don't do that here. Man, that, that move is just so, so good. And look at this! Oh my goodness. Yo, 6k damage and a debuff. 7k? <laughs> That was insane. This and character. now you need to block. And you know you need to remember, right? Because she has two hitting moves, she can actually punish any guard cancel. You cannot guard cancel her two hitting moves. She can just cancel into a 2H, cancel into a barrier, and then get the conversion. Plenty of ways yeah. for her to punish guard cancels. So you need to block and you need to figure out when is the command drop coming. Exactly. It's, it's so threatening. She, just the options this character has. And she's, she's got like six lows. She can just keep doing lows, pressuring you. Block strings go on for days. It's horrible. Yep, and if he gets wrong, you get the debuff at the end. But right now, it's Gopis forced to block a back super dash, and the Dragon Rush is finally gonna open Yasha up. A rare successful Dragon Rush on, on Yasha, I might add. Oh no, this is the command grab. Okay, more any one of these could be cancelled into that level 1 command grab. Yasha realizes it. Okay, sparks yeah. up. Ooh, oh, that was so low. The last second dash to make sure this stays high. And since he's 17, he's going to build approximately 7 billion yes. bars. That is a dead end with one, man. Oh, she is. That is overkill right there. Yeah. She's going to have to spend yeah, 5 meters and probably get the, the buff on uh, Broly. Yeah, he will. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get the right level 3 to finish. And Lab Code 21 is out of the equation. Group is on two characters, of course. He's still got... Uh, that spark to work with if he wants to uh, build a combat there, but Yasha looking good. And you know Yasha's side, a, a, you know, that was a big breath of relief right there, getting rid of Lab Coat 21. When you see you killed her on the opposing team, it is just the best feeling in the world, man. You don't have to worry about no more debuff threats, anything like that. You can just play your game. And right now, Yasha playing it with this buffed Broly 5% extra with the shirt off. Okay. He's really trying to make use of armor there. Like, oh! Well, you know what? We have not seen that grab yet, but she's just reminding us, Broly, I can, I can grab you as well, man. Absolutely. And you know what? I haven't actually seen much of uh, Gropis uh, Majin 21. I haven't seen much of him play this character, you know? We, yeah. we know him usually for the, the, the... Oh my goodness, that was so dirty. How do you block classic. that? You, you, you guess. Simple, it's math and it's a 50-50. <laughs> it works or it does not. <laughs> you, you just yeah. pick a side. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, before I was so rudely interrupted by that disgraceful mix-up uh, from Gropis, I was just about to say, you know, we know him for the more unique characters, the, the babies, the freezers, the Beerus, etc. Um, but really uh, picking a strong shell, I feel, here with the double 21 and the Zamasu. I must say, this is the most meta team I've ever seen Gropis play. And I meant Gropis yeah, totally. in like season two, right? Gropis was playing like Zamasu, Jiren, and Frieza in season two. This is the <laughs> yeah, first I time remember. I see Gropis playing like optimal characters. Oh my god, get out of here, man. That's sick. One character. Left by Yasha. Bro, that was ridiculous. Man like Grope is looking good here to take the set against Yasha. He is, but Yasha gets the opening with the key blaster. But he's most likely gonna need three touch unless he gets like level three into a medium starter behind this. Gonna put yeah. the pressure on that 21. Yep, we go for the level three. We got the mix behind. There is still a spark available for Grope if he wants to save, and the spark is there. 
of course. Oh, man. Yasha unable to get an in kind of anti-air approach there. And this is going to be so much damage. It's adding up. It's not enough to kill, but it's going to be good for Gropis. Going to one touch okay, right one now. Yasha forced to block. There is a spark. Still blocking. Plus 21 on block. And look at this. He blocked. He was waiting for the empty. Delayed the 5L. And just got an extension this way. Sending her down. Can he build enough damage to get that level 2 to kill after that? Ah, it's possible. I don't think this is dead, though. I think it's Magic Pixel. Oh, no, it did kill. Yo, the MVP is here. I was Man about to say, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I saved my life. I actually saved my Bro, life from the uh, I, I can't believe how much that did, man. Limit to break. Uh, limit break saves lives, as always. And look at this. You're trying now to chase that Zamasu who is just flying around. And it's going to be just Yasha who really likes floating around as well with characters. <laughs> trying to get to that Zamasu. There are three bars and there we go. The opening goes to Gropis to get the kill and win that exhibition. Two, one, Gropis. Yeah, so Zombie and Shuabu are actually longtime training partners for this game ever since Shuabu, you know, started playing this. I, 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 if I'm remembering correctly, this is actually Shuabu's first uh, competitive fighting game, period. Just straight that up. Is impressive. Right? And that is impressive. Zombie has been around for quite some time, right? These are two of the most driving forces of the West Coast Grand Blue scene in terms of strength. And here they are. Without further ado, we are in the match. Kagiostro, of course, from Zombie Moo and Six from Shuabu. The story characters, both of these players have seen each other in CEO and Frosty Fosting top eights. So this is a familiar run back, not just in the training lab, but also in the tournament scene. Yeah, this was actually grand finals of Frosty Faustings this year, and there we go, we see the Abare. So you guys know that these two have played each other a lot, not just because they're the training partners, but also because they run into each other in tournament. So you're going to see a lot of those button presses out of pressure situations that normally you would probably be too scared to press. But there it is, the jump back on the teleport, already ready for it, and just an immediate destruction of it. First round to Zombie. Zombie Moon certainly loving to challenge in bold places, especially when they know the opponent. And Six can be a scary character to mash against. And if you mess up a huge amount of damage, you see Shubu trying to find a way in to avoid the setups from Zombie Moon. Finally gets the EX conversion to the corner. Yeah, that EX wall dive putting in work. And now this is where you're going to see some of the heaviest pressure. That teleport right there is plus one on block if it's just done by itself. The frame traps are coming in left and right. This is one of the few characters with a true difficult to block mix up uh, in six. But there it is, the teleport to get out. It does have a hitbox. Going to go straight into Super Sky Bound Art. Obviously not going to kill, but at least this puts you back in the game health wise if you're zombie. Absolutely. All right, Zombie playing down the setups once again. Great blocks from Shuabu. Not getting caught up just yet, but Zombie checking again on the landing with the light. Dashing up, EX teleport, and evasion from Shuabu. I love Shuabu's heads up defense. Yeah, it's really hard to deal with that teleport situation from Cagliostro, but it is not seeming to be difficult whatsoever for Zombie to know when the teleports are coming as just neutral jump, wait for that and then just hit a button, right? Because even if Six doesn't teleport there, what happens is you destroy the clone and there's no more hurt, uh, hitbox there. So you don't have to deal with it. You're just good to go. And wow, already catching the jump back dive kick as well. Zombie completely ready for the matchup, but there it is, frame trap right there for Shuobu. Shuobu pushing Zombie to the corner and immediate light again, just checking the dash up and the teleport out. The Houdini act from Zombie move. And I, I gotta commend the way Shubu has been fighting these uh, these webs at the bottom, but unfortunately for him, Zombie has been just going, okay, well, you're fighting the webs, right? So, like, that's normally the way I stop people from playing neutral. So, I'm just going to hit you for trying to be able to negate those, to try and get around those, right? And it's been paying off such big dividends. Yeah, exhibition point here for Zombie Moo. Shubu gonna have to step up just a little bit more, has Zombie Moo in the corner. This is where you want Kagalostro. Finally gets a hit, catching Zombie Moo, trying to jump out. Yeah, and oh, on the counter hit frame trap right there as well. Okay, here's the knockdown situation. You know, Six, he does not do a lot of damage, but he will get a ton of hits. Oh, big hit right there, but no EX until just the very end right there to be able to convert off Zombie, however, now being able to take the corner because of that, and you're going to see a lot of this, like, spacing right here, right? You want to stay under the webs and then force him to run, yes. Was hoping for the wall bounce, but, you know, not going not gonna to be too too worried about it. Absolutely not. And Zombie Moo with Super Skybound Art available due to being under the health requirement. 
Shubu got to be really careful not to get pieced up at all. Gosh. Shubu's got to make something happen right there, trying to use the Wreck of Backdash to be able to get out. Zombie ready for it, negating. No, not negating the trap. The teleport comes out, but the counter. Oh my goodness, Throw does get teched right there. Zombie is a big proponent of just reaction teching in this game. But eventually could not react to the final tech. Shuobu, I can't believe it has stayed alive in this set. <laughs> Listen, Shuobu has hung around just to see if they can make something happen. And finally is getting in on Zombie Wu once more. EX back, but Zombie Wu out of the corner. Such a heads up player knowing to get out of the danger zone immediately with those teleports. Yeah, I, it, it felt like that, that Zombie just knew that wall dive was coming. It was like, oh, I'm going to use this to advantage to try and teleport to get out of the corner. And wow, a reaction on the anti-air as well. There's so much space control from Zombie. And for sure that this is like, this is the wheelhouse of this character, but Zombie is just playing it almost perfectly. Oh my goodness, big oh my wall bounce. No, big drop! Zombie looking to just get that tap. All they need is one hit to cancel into a Skybound Art and close the door, but Shubu still hanging in there, gets the light as well. Full conversion all the way to the corner. No, Zombie again with the check with the light and cancels into the Skybound Art for the finish. Yeah, if you're not gonna meaty me, I am just gonna hit. Evil Genius is the Kill Sage and Cloud King. Who will our star be tonight? Action! Oh man, of course that heavy kick doing work, but the assist, you can't beat that assist, come on. Get out of here, oh, get out of here. Three skull seconds yeah. and we're double snapping, fastest in the business. <laughs> double snap and double, you gotta do it. Ooh, fantastic incoming there from Cloud. Is unable to get the mix. How'd you block that? Oh, ho, ho, ho. IADs doing work, not again. <laughs> Great lows there from Sage. She's just so clean with these Philia mix -ups. You love to see it. And great anti assist as well. Okay. Man, oh man, you can't block. How can you block? <laughs> Beatrix then comes out again. Great cover for Sage there. Mm hmm. Ugh. Sage doing an amazing job of making the instant air dash uh, jump ins work just with the right timing based on the assist block stuff. Absolutely. Sage's, Sage's timing inside this game is bar none, and his Philia especially does a great job of quickly getting in there. Whew. Fantastic counter. Cloud's got a long Cloud. way to go. It's not it's not impossible. Of course, <laughs> Val being the only character who can revive, about to get a kill here. Three meters. Can't spend any meter here if you want that revive eventually. Can finish the combo. No biggie. Very nice. Okay, still got a little bit to go. Gonna have to mix twice. Oh! Helm! Thine helm has been splitted. <laughs> Incoming jumping HP, fantastic answer to almost everything that you have to do with a button there. And I think Sage practiced it, labbed it out just a bit. Now, as a reminder, this is going to be a first to two here. So if Sage does win this very next match, he will actually win the entire exhibition. Now, I have to say, Kai, what amazing filia work we saw there, honestly. This is something that I've come to associate with Sage, and rightfully so, in the modern era. His Philia is ballistic! I'm wondering what the incoming is going to be here from Philia. Just a very safe backdash here, Cloud completely respecting him. There's a much different pace, not willing to go in. Yeah. Let's slow it down, mm -hmm. that's what Cloud's thinking. Now Sage still has his momentum here, especially with Beatixen, oh great. Cloud waited out that beat extend, immediately went in afterwards. Okay, gonna need one reset here with the meter available. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, that lag vial did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> you can't just neutral jump back for your Oki there. <laughs> okay, okay. Nice. You Using all that extra oh! dizzy. Yeah. Cloud, even with the bile, thought that that would be enough to kill. Not quite. Managed to pick up the kill. Lucky at the end. Oh, okay, oh, interesting. Very atypical drop there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of atypical drops. <laughs> get a Valentine's little fancy free now. Mm-hmm. Nice. Other side, and again, another drop. A little bit of nerves. Old pals playing. 
Okay, Valentine. Okay, Valentine. Man, no, fantastic use those five meters last round. Yeah. <laughs> well, he doesn't have any dead characters assist this time, so we may not even see an opportunity to use it. But we'll see. Oh! Barely on the outside to confirm. Good try. Oh. Nice to double yeah, low. Yeah, great double low. Mm -hmm. Spending the meter. Goodbye. Delete Hi, it. no signs, though. No songs. No songs. No, all business. All business. <laughs> oh! Ooh, great PvP there. Yes. No, I love that one. Do you combo you one reset and you're done. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what? Just go to level three. Yep. Beautiful there. Cloud going ahead and tying it up 1-1. One, one. Kai, I did not expect that because of the literal speed with which Sage disposed of Cloud last time. It seems as though Cloud came back in kind. Yeah, absolutely. So when things go wrong early on, it can change the entire pace of the match. Uh, Cloud getting double snapped in three seconds pretty much sealed the deal on them. These players are so close together, there was nowhere to go from there. But that one was a lot, a lot cleaner from Cloud. I mean, that's that's the king we know. And here we see a much more aggressive round start from both players right here. Sage not being as passive as previously, and Cloud still has green bar. Actually, oh the vials. Yet. Let's go. The vial set oh, play. That oh, that double snap oh. would have been huge. Mm -hmm. Oh man, double just by the daylights. <laughs> Cloud forgot that that Annie assist was a double punch and only blocks the first hit and is now unfortunately reaping the rewards from that. Luckily, yeah, plenty of damage luckily here. Luckily, he was able to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2,000 yeah. points. And he got points. <laughs> Beautiful. Adam on Dizzy, gotta do something here. Let him come out just a little bit. Oh no! The assist okay. game! Mm -hmm. okay. Tags the assist, Great very pressure. nice. A little bit of damage. Yeah. Oh! That's. Ooh! Mm -hmm. We're getting That's a lot of mass supers shot. right now. Yeah. Nice, good conversion. Gonna build one meter here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna reset, Great. but no! Beautiful. Gets and gets all the counter hit damage from this. Yes! That's gonna kill. Beautiful, wonderful. Hey, way to even it up. Two characters, two characters. Oh, snatched. Okay, just kind of flow chart here. Oh, that could have been way worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Watch yeah, it. that double Watch is it. just sitting there. Ooh. Almost punished that crescent, just trying to approach. Trying to a little push bit a too greedy. You had to know Ban would be there. Like mm -hmm, a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. Every single time. <laughs> Has the meter to kill here. Yeah, just spend it. Let's not mess around. Mm -hmm. This is the reveal and show. Uses the opportunity no to messing also around get up. For sure. Big Band's out, not playing. Oh, any of very these weird games. hit. Now we're in the scramble. Now we're in the scramble. Cloud building up meter probably won't get to five, but it still could happen. Oh, that hit's not good. You're gonna build two meters here, so DHC might be enough. Very slight <clears throat> meter. Has to oh. oh no, with the drop! Oh, goes for the grab. Wow. Right back into his loving arms. Cloud says, I didn't even want to win that one. Here you go, bro. <laughs> Wow, Kai, moments like that are why I'm so incredibly excited to see Skullgirls at EVO again this year. 